Well, so James, perhaps we could begin by um, per confirming the date that you leave, because we've always known that it was going to be in September, but we didn't know the precise date. I think that there is a date now, is there? Yes, M a week on Monday, Monday the 28th of September. So I'm here um, for the RGP Freedom Parade on the, and then the subsequent uh, reception in the garden on the Saturday, and then we'll leave on the Monday. And the method of your departure by sea? Uh, certainly by sea, um, yet to be confirmed precisely uh, which boat, depending on uh, availability at the time, but yes, certainly by sea. Okay, and I don't suppose you're going to tell me today who's going to be taking over from you? No, it would be nice to be able to do so, um, uh, but I can't. Um, the, uh, the, I mean, the announcement can't be made until all the approvals are, are in place. Uh, I mean, it may seem odd to some people that, that it's that it, that it seems to take so long uh, for this, but but I think in in some ways that's quite good news um, because it shows just how seriously this job is taken by the UK and and the processes that that, that are gone through. Um, approval. I mean, clearly there's a there's an application process, there's an interview, there's a shortlist process, there's an interview process, but then there's an approval process, and the approvals process for for for, the, for this post and indeed for other governors, but certainly for this one. Uh, is uh, the Foreign Secretary, the Prime Minister, and then Her Majesty the Queen. So I'm not in a position to tell you either where we are in that process, because otherwise uh, you might suggest there was being delays and, and, and there isn't, um, or, or, or when it's going to, when the announcement will be made. But, but, but I think we can all rest assured that the system will always make sure that there is a person um, uh, competent to be governor in the post of governor. It's been reported, as, as you know, in the press that uh, there, there were two candidates, that one is a military person, the other is a civilian person. Is that accurate? I don't want to comment on that for the reasons that uh, I've just given. What I will say, though, is that <clears throat> um, obviously uh, I'm leaving a week on Monday and we don't have a name. Um, you could reasonably uh, um, construe from that that there could be a period of time before uh, that person, once selected and approved, I I is available. I, I mean, it would not be unusual either in Gibraltar or any other uh, overseas territory or other overseas territory for there to be uh, an interim arrangement, um, and that might well turn out to be to be necessary here. So, if if there are two shortlisted candidates, the same applies in both cases. Whoever of the two is chosen will not be in a position to take up the appointment straight away. I I don't want to be pushed too much further on this. <laughs> the, 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 it's highly likely, uh, I would say, that there is going to be a, 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 a period of time uh, before the, the, the permanent successor I, I, is available. We have somebody, of course, at the moment who, who does that when you're away. We have Alison Macmillan. Might it be her? Well, I mean, there's, there's a number of staff here, and, and Alison is, is called the deputy governor in, in her daytime role. Um, uh, she, when I'm away, she's the acting governor, uh, when for a brief period, actually, if you remember at Christmas, we were both away, um, uh, the speaker um, mm -hmm. kindly stood in as, as, as acting governor. But you can only have an acting governor when there's a governor somewhere else. Mm -hmm. If the governor has left, then the person in position is the governor, and we'll always ensure that somebody competent is in that position. You, you mentioned how the speaker acted for you not that long ago. Why not have a Gibraltarian governor? Is that something that might be con conceived of in the future? I, I think whilst... I mean, I, I'm sure anything could be conceived of in, in, in the future. It depend, it, one can never tell how things uh, turn out. I think while the constitutional arrangement remains as it is, with the UK retaining the, uh, the, the um, responsibility for external relations, defence and internal security. I think it makes sense. I think, uh, I think it makes sense for, for that person to be uh, non-Gibraltarian. Who knows how this may change I in future. And it also makes sense, I suppose, that it should be somebody from a military background in the sense that the governor, of course, besides being governor of Gibraltar, is also the commander in chief. I think I know that there is a very strong preference in Gibraltar from, for somebody with a military background. Um, I, think, I think the fact of the matter is the job could be done very competently and very well by a, somebody with a civilian, uh, the correct civilian background. It was done, I think, reasonably competently, very competently by the now Lord Luce, then Sir Richard Luce. 
uh, and then his two, two successors. There were three civilian governors. Uh, um, I know there is a strong preference for a military governor, and the UK knows that as well. And of course, all these things are factored into the decision, I'm sure. One thing certainly that your successor will have no illusions about is, is the job that they're taking on yeah. and also the reasons um, for, for which you decided to leave early. I mean, do you think that perhaps the, the reasons that, that you gave, the, the, the fact that you felt that the job was very ceremonial and uh, perhaps not as, as hands-on as it might have been, yeah. has that, because this is what people tell me and were saying at the time, has that diminished the role of a governor for the future? No, I don't think so at all. No, I, I mean, that was, you know, people, People want different things out of jobs and appointments. Um, I mean, when I said there was too much, and I'm not sure I did say this, but it was certainly interpreted as too much ceremonial and too much representational. That, that's actually not true. I mean, I, I, the, the ceremonial and representational here is hugely important, great fun. I very much enjoy it. Liz, my wife, very much enjoys the part that she plays in that as well, which is quite significant. Uh, it's very important in Gibraltar, it's very important to the UK, and representing the Queen uh, could never be described as, as being a, an, an inadequate job. So I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, that. Um, the, I, I, I had expected possibly rather more to the job outside of that in diplomatic and political terms. But I think that was more due to the fact that I hadn't really researched properly exactly what the constitutional role of the governor uh, under the 2006 constitution is. And I, I mean, it's very clear that, that, that uh, Gibraltar, as, an, as a UK overseas territory, under the 2006 constitution, is pretty largely self-governing. And the governor's role, HM, Her Majesty's government's role, exercised through the governor, um, is um, defence, external external relations, defence, and internal security. Now they don't take up. I'm glad to say, an enormous amount of my day. If internal security ever does, um, uh, we'll have a problem. So um, much of much of the rest of my work. Uh, here is based on influence, talking to people, uh, influencing them, uh, suggesting other ways of doing things. And that's great, uh, hugely important. I'm not belittling it in any way. I just wanted to get, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm not cutting and running. I'll have done nearly two years. So I'll have done two thirds of what I was expected to do. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that every year I get older um, and I want to do other things while I still can. Okay, but you mentioned the, the responsibilities that the governor does have under the constitution, things like internal security and defence. Yeah. Perhaps some might say that you would have been entitled to think that when you came to Gibraltar, especially given what's happened since you arrived with the incursions, with the queues and with the situation with Spain, people might have been forgiven if, if, for thinking that you would be right in thinking you could have a more hands-on role. Well, I mean, hands-on in what way? Yes, I mean, certainly, I have a hands, I have a very hands-on role as as head of the uh, as the as the chairman of the Gibraltar Security Council, as we now call it, which is myself, the chief minister, the CBF, uh, um, uh, and the commissioner. Um, and we've set up actually, well, we've changed the names, but we've slightly revamped the committee structure below that in response to to, to the security threats around Europe and, and our perception of how that could. Uh, affect Gibraltar. So there has been a lot of work in that respect um, uh, and, and I think it's been useful work. So it's, it's, you know, it's not, it hasn't just been entirely representational and ceremonial. There is another side to the job as well which, which, is, which, which can be quite busy. Um, I, I think I, I was thinking more in terms of diplomatic and political activity. Um, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think I had, a, it, there was a lot of talk about Hawk Talks and still is when I came here. Um, they haven't happened, but that, that's, that's, a diff that's a different question. They haven't happened yet. Uh, hopefully they will. You would have liked to be I, involved in that well, if that I had, had happened. I assumed that I might have a role to play in that. But actually, a proper reading of the Constitution um, would have shown me uh, that, in fact, I would be highly unlikely to have any uh, part to play in that. So, so you, you didn't do your homework before coming? Is that what you say? Well, I didn't do that bit of the homework, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was very busy working somewhere else when I, um, uh, when, when I, I went through the process of, uh, of being selected for this job. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I make no excuses, but, you know, that, that's, the way, that's the way the situation is here now. And, and I think that's quite right, too. Have you, have you had... Um a smooth relationship with uh, the Foreign Office and with the Foreign Office staff here in the convent because, as you know, 
people have speculated that there's been a bit of friction there, and perhaps this has been a factor in your decision. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of spec. You, you can get lots of speculation in a sm well in any community, and certainly in a small community like this. You know, I've I've, I've read that apparently uh, there's friction between myself and the chief minister. Um, well, you know, I mean, that could not be further from the truth. I was going to ask about that as of well. Of course, and, and and but and with the foreign office now, you know, I, I will not pretend that I see eye to eye with the foreign office on every single aspect of every single issue. But then there'd be no point in being here if I did, because they could run the whole thing from there. The value of having a now very small team embedded in this overseas territory, in this in this uh, in this nation of of, of Gibraltar, uh, is that uh, we are interacting daily with Gibraltarians and getting those views and understanding those views and and and, and so on. So no, I don't agree with everything that the Foreign Office does. Um, um, but then there'd be no point in being here if I did. The whole idea is that there should be some tension between the two um, perceptions. And possibly you don't agree with everything the Chief Minister does because there was also rumoured that you weren't happy with the, the person chosen as the Attorney that. General. No, I'm not happy with everything my wife does. But, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, mean, uh, I mean, clearly, of course, of course I'm not happy with everything. But um, Fabian Picardo and I have got an extremely strong and good working relationship. I, I, I think I could describe our, our relationship as a true friendship which will endure. Um, yeah, I might do things differently, but I'm not, uh, I'm not the Chief Minister and uh, um, uh, I'm not up for election. Was there a disagreement, though, specifically on the question of the AG? Um, I mean, there is no secret of the fact that we had a, uh, a different view about the process that led to the selection of Michael Yamas as AG. Um, I have never uh, had any uh, um, uh, problem with the individual. We could not have got a better man to be AG than Michael Yamas. And I've had lots of dealings with him before and since, and he is the perfect fit for that role. Uh, and, and excellent in the job. And um, another occasion when perhaps you and the Chief Minister weren't singing from the same hymn sheet was at the time of the Queen's birthday parade and the presence of those two Spanish civil guards in uniform. What happened there? Yeah, well, what happened there was that the, uh, the civil guards have always been invited. Now, uh, you know, I think there was a perception that somehow I had invited them. And actually, technically, actually, technically, the invitations to the parade uh, on casemates uh, go from the command of British forces, not from the convent, technically. In actuality, of course, we all work as... Uh, and, and, of course, I don't sit down with the telephone book and, and uh, decide on who to invite to the Queen's Birthday Parade. Uh, you know, we, I think we invite 900-plus into the garden afterwards. I don't sit down with Jasmine and, uh, and, and, and work it out. What we do is we take last year's list and we send it to various organizations and say, do you want to change this? Do you want to add to it? Do you want to subtract to it? We can have five more from here, 10 more from there. So I, I don't, uh, you know, f fine. I, I, technically, uh, I, I invited them. Um, I still do not believe that it was necessarily a, a, a bad thing that they came. I think they stood six or seven times uh, and saluted during the playing uh, of the national anthem. And they saluted uh, as the, uh, the Queens and regimental color of the Royal Gibraltar Regiment was paraded past. I think that's good news, not bad news. And, and the fact that they were in uniform was just a, a faux pas? I think, I think we'll, only they will know the true story, but I think there might well have been a miscommunication between those two who were new to the area and their boss. Okay, well, one, one issue that has dominated really uh, local affairs, local politics in the time that you've been here is the, the continuous, continuing and continuous incursions by Spain into Gibraltar's waters and laterally into the airspace as well. Has that bedeviled your time here a little bit? Well, I think I, think I, I sometimes say uh, half-jokingly to people that any governor who comes here fails within the first week because um, especially a, a one with a, a, a sort of military past that you can read about and, uh, and you know, people read my, um, uh, read my biography and said, oh yeah, Iraq, Afghanistan, ah, he's coming to sort out the incursions. So of course, I, I'd only been here 72 hours before I'd failed. Uh, in that respect, I mean, I say that in a slightly joking way, but I mean, of course, we 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 are all concerned uh, about the incursions, particularly concerned about recent ones that that seem to have become uh, more aggressive, um, and uh, 
so has it bedeviled my time? No, I mean, the, the, the incursions have been going on for 50 years. That doesn't excuse any of them, but they have been going on for 50 years. Um, we have become a lot more aware of them recently because of social media and people watching and people with high-powered binoculars and cameras and so on. So we're more aware of them. None of this excuses them. It's all inexcusable. Um, uh, it's extraordinarily difficult uh, to know what to do about them. That I, I constantly say to people that I talk to in Gibraltar, you know, can somebody give me a potential solution to this problem that's better than the problem itself. Well, and it's very difficult to know what to do. Do you think that um, stationing a larger Navy vessel here might, might help, if, if for nothing else, to deter? I, I'm already on record several times, so I have no problem in saying that I think a, a larger, more capable Royal Naval craft w would be good um, because of the message it sends. Nothing to do with its pushing, shoving, or, uh, or anything like that. We don't want to do any of that, of course. Um, I think one with better sea-keeping capabilities that could remain at sea for longer and that could perhaps launch ribs uh, from, from um, w would be good. Uh, there is a resource issue and there's a priority issue, of course, uh, and others make, make that decision. One thing I would say that, that, that has improved, I think, quite markedly recently and is yet to improve further is the coordination between the different agencies that operate on the water. So the Royal Navy, the GDP, the police, uh, the, um, the um, customs. But sadly not with, with the Spanish authorities because despite the recent statement well, that it cooperates, we are seeing very aggressive behaviour from the are. Spanish authorities, aren't we? I still would like to hope, think and hope, that the statements made by politicians in Madrid were made in good faith. Now, I, I have to say that there have been a couple of incidents since that, that place doubt, in, at the very least, place doubt in our minds. But what really worries me ab about those incidents is that I suspect that the politicians did make those, uh, did, did make those undertakings in good faith but that they haven't got full control locally of their own law enforcement agencies. And in some ways, I find that even more concerning than the activities of the, of, of, uh, you know, of, than the actual activities. Because if a state has not got control of its own forces and their um, uh, the, up to and including lethal force, whether that happens to be weapons or using the bait itself in, in, in a potentially dangerous or even lethal way, then that really is a concern. And you, and you and think that that's uh, what's happening? Well, I mean, it's difficult to come to another conclusion uh, uh, at the moment. I mean, I hope it's not true, but I, I don't believe that politicians in, in Madrid, uh, at the level in which they were engaged, which was, you know, the two prime ministers' offices, I don't believe they come up with undertakings uh, uh, that, that, that are meaningless. But, but this, of course, happened just before the visit of uh, Prime Minister Cameron to Madrid. So a cynic might say that it was precisely uh, in order to smooth the passage of that meeting and, and his visit, the, the Prime Minister's visit. I mean, th that's a possibility. I wonder if they're that joined up. I don't think we are, actually. So maybe they're not either. Maybe. That's a possibility. Yes, certainly. Um, but, you know, I, I still... I still maintain, and, and I know, uh, and, I, and of course I've, I've seen the government press release last night, and, and I fully understand it. Um, so what did UK do about the recent one? Well, I mean, it, it was helpful that, that in fact the Minister for Europe and his opposite number from Spain were actually in the same conference in Cambridge in UK at the time. So when uh, the initial report, when, when we said in our in, in initial response that there'd been ministerial involvement, this was face-to-face -face ministerial involvement within hours of the incident. And that is quite significant. That must have an, an, an effect. Um, but I still maintain that the real way to, the only real way to try and resolve this, but bearing in mind that we're talking here about young men in fast boats, uh, in poor sea conditions, believing, genuinely believing, some of them, uh, that, that, that they are righting the wrongs of, 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 of other boats. Um, and, you know, the adrenaline flows and you get yourselves into, into difficult situations. The real way to, to resolve this, and there is work going on at the right level for this, is to get those two organisations to talk to each other. You know that people are 
rather fed up with what they see as a mantra now that the Foreign Office puts out mm. whenever there's been an incursion, that these incursions are, are not a, a violation of sovereignty, but they're not a challenge to it and so on. And usually the line has come from them. There was one occasion, though, I think in August, when you issued a statement, the governor says, was that perhaps symptomatic of, of a sense of frustration that you wanted to be able to well, say more than the Foreign Office says? Well, I, I mean, the, the, believe me, the Foreign Office is equally frustrated by only being able to put out what we now call that mantra, uh, because we get back to the, the business of, of, you know, can anybody think of a sol another solution to the problem that, that places in a situation that's better than the problem? Um, and so we have to put, I mean, that has to be put, because it is true, and the best legal advice tells us that is true, uh, and always has done, and, and is regularly tested. The, I, think the state, uh, I think the incident you're talking about when I put out a statement was the one in, uh, uh, off the beach. That's uh, right, um, on Sandy Bay. When I, when, I saw, when I saw the video, I mean, that, that, the reason I put out a statement there, with, with, with the full knowledge and, and agreement uh, of London, I mean, I, I put it out anyway, but it did have that full knowledge and agreement, was, was because that was just so dangerous uh, 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 and so obviously um, a, 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 a massive overreaction to any potential um, threat or situation. That, I mean, it was truly, I, I, when I first saw the video, actually, I mean, I was horrified because I, I saw things in the world that I thought were heads of swimmers. In fact, it was boys. But even so, there were swimmers around there. There were people who do training for uh, triathlon and things there who you barely see in the water and in their wetsuits anyway. So that, that was truly irresponsible behavior and, and needed some sort of reaction. I mean, they would say in defense, the Spanish, that there was hot pursuit and that they were trying to catch suspected drug smugglers. The incident on the 11th of September, this latest one that we've seen pictures of with the ramming and so on, those were two apparently innocent um, boats or innocent occupants on those boats. Doesn't that in a way make this, this incident even more serious than the one that we've referred to in well, August? On grades of seriousness, yeah, possibly. I mean, certainly it was very serious and should be taken seriously. You will have seen what uh, what Spain has said about that incident though, where they have attempted to turn this around uh, and claim uh, that in fact uh, the, the bad behaviour was by our side. Now, I've seen the video, so I know the truth. Um, we just need to make sure they watch the video. Uh, um, but it, it's very difficult when you have a situation of he said and then he said and, 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 and no meeting of minds. Which is why, if we could have the, you know, if they genuinely, if the Guardia Civil, if the SVA genuinely believe that a boat is doing something that it should not be doing, then their response needs to be to uh, to to um, contact. Which is why I say this personal craft to craft liaison is so important. They need to talk. They, they need to have a means of talking to each other um, uh, to make sure that uh, because you know. We're not condoning, uh, we in Gibraltar are not condoning criminal behaviour either. Far from it. We've spoken about how the Royal Navy has been dealing with these incidents. What about the World Water Police? Do you think that they're doing everything that they should be? Well, I mean, I'm not... A, you appoint it, the commissioner. I mean, yeah, <laughs> sorry? You appoint the commissioner. Yeah, I mean, yes. My, I mean, my, my role uh, uh, in internal security and so on, I mean, it's, it's in the Police Act, it's in the Constitution, so it's very clear. Um, do I, be, uh, I, I am entirely content that the, the Commissioner and the police force are, are doing uh, uh, what they should be uh, on, on the water. Okay, and uh, perhaps we will we'll go on to a nicer part of the interview and um, ask you about how you've enjoyed the last two years and maybe some of the highlights for you and your wife, of course. I mean, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and so our decision to go slightly earlier than would have been normal or necessary is nothing to do with not liking Gibraltar or not liking Gibraltarians. We've made lots of friends here. It's a great place um, in different circumstances. One could want to live here forever. It doesn't work for governors and, and, and for, for obvious reasons. Um, uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed it uh, and uh, uh, we'll look back on our time in Gibraltar very fondly and, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll return here uh, and, and we'll uh, have lots, uh, uh, keep lots of friends as, as a result. Um, highlights, uh, I, think, um, I, think, I think the, the 
investitures, and I, I did the last one that I'm going to do yesterday, and I said at the time, well, you know, this is one of the things I'm certainly going to miss. The investitures in particular uh, are great because um, they mean so much to the individuals who are getting the awards. And for my first one, you know, so it was a two-hour engagement in that uniform and we had drinks after it. And, and it, was only, it was only when I'd done one that I realised just how much this means to people who are, are, are getting the awards. Um, a, a hugely big deal, quite rightly, and their families come along and they're great occasions. So I think, I think the investitures are the highlights. Many former governors, of course, attend the Gibraltar Day in London. That's coming up in October. I don't know whether yep. that may be a bit soon for you, but can we expect to see you no, there I, in future? I, no, I will be there. Uh, will be I there. have the invitation um, and uh, I will be there. And in fact, the following day, I'm driving, uh, leaving quite early in the morning to go up to the National Memorial Arboretum where the memorial is being uh, unveiled that day. This is Albert Poggio is putting together the team that's going there. And, and so, uh, so I'm going to go and do that as well. So, so I certainly will not be unconnected with Gibraltar. And beyond, beyond that, what are your plans? Have you got something lined up already? Uh, not, not specifically. You will know that, uh, well, you may not, but uh, I worked for, uh, between leaving the Royal Marines in 2010 and coming here in 2013, I, I worked for a, a big uh, um, American firm called Bechtel, a, a construction engineering company, and much wider than that as well. Um, I worked for them in West Africa. I'm not going to go back to West Africa, but... but um, uh, I enjoyed working for them. They seemed to quite enjoy me working for them. So there's at least a, a good possibility I'll get back to them. I'm talking, I, I never stopped talking to them. I'm talking to them again now. I don't have a specific role or a specific time scale. Um, okay. But, but uh, in the near future. In the near future. Mm -hmm. Very finally, your message to the Gibraltarians on the eve, well, two weeks, if you'll pardon the, uh, the, the time lapse that I'm giving, uh, on the eve of your departure virtually. Well, I, I mean, I'm very grateful to all Gibraltarians for the way in which they accept um, um, an outsider from the UK into Gibraltar as, as governor. Um, I, I, very, very few people, uh, uh, and certainly none I've met personally, uh, have been anything other than uh, uh, welcoming and charming and grateful for everything uh, that's done here. Um, so my message to them is thank you very much for that and I wish everyone the very best of luck and I look forward to continuing to, to, to work on behalf of Gibraltar from a distance. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.